So, Mr. Hirsch, you assert that the official American version of what happened to Osama bin Laden is almost entirely false. You say that the Pakistanis were hiding bin Laden, that they knew about the raid, that there was no firefight in the compound, that the Saudis were fronting bin Laden's expenses, that the U.S. didn't bury bin Laden at sea. They tossed what remained of his body basically outside out of the helicopter. What motive would the U.S. have for lying about this? And not just the, the U.S., but the Pakistanis and the Saudis. Most of what you said is pretty much what I write in this most recent article of mine. And all I can tell you is as far, I think the simple way to describe it, uh, the president, our president did authorize the raid. The SEALs carried it out. They did kill bin Laden. They got in and out successfully. And the rest of it is sort of hogwash. But, but why, I mean, why would there be this, and what you're alleging is a massive conspiracy involving what would have to be dozens of people in three different countries that has sustained itself until now what would be the motive for, for setting up this elaborate hoax? The critical thing, Anderson, that happened is that we weren't supposed to go public with the raid. The deal with Pasha and Kiani and the rest of the staff of, of the uh, Pakistan, upper reaches of the Pakistani uh, military community was that we were gonna, the SEALs were going to go in, kill this guy, grab the body, take it out. Seven to ten days, I have two different numbers, Later, the president, we were going to announce, the president Obama was going to announce that, oh, my God, we did a drone, stri a drone strike in Waziristan, the sort of no man's land between Pakistan and, and, and Afghanistan, the Hindu Kush mountain area. We did a drone strike, and, my God, we saw this big guy. He looked familiar. We took pictures. We took DNA. We got, we got bin Laden. Instead, the night of the raid, the president, for the only thing the people talk to me, obviously, military and intelligence people. Their belief is he did it for political purposes. I don't know what was in the president's mind. He announced and said immediately that we got him. Look, there are plenty of people who share your skepticism, but in this situation, I mean, there are actual member, members of SEAL Team 6, Matt Bissonnette, Robert Neal, who have gone public, have said that the raid did, in fact, happen, basically, as the government said. Their comrades put their lives at risk, were shot at in the compound. Right. There were bullet holes all over the place. Are you saying they're lying? Uh, I'm saying, I can tell you one thing, um, I don't know about O'Neill. And Neil said we went in thinking we were going to die, which I think is a great exaggeration. And Bissonnette, who also wrote the book, I think, No Easy Day or something like that, um, uh, certainly was not telling the truth about that. Absolutely. I think that his book was, there was a lot of stuff interesting in his book, but there was a lot of stuff, operational stuff, that everybody, most of his fellow SEALs, sort of laugh at. Peter, I mean, you've heard what Cy Hirsch has said tonight and also in the article. He's got a, you know, tremendous history as a journalist. He's broken important stories years ago. What do you make of this one? That's all true, Anderson. And, but, I mean, you know, the, the firefight that took place at the bin Laden compound is just sort of incontrovertibly true. The idea that this was some kind of piece of performance art cooked up by the United States and the Pakistanis is not, uh, there's no evidence for that. In fact, there's a lot of countervailing evidence. You mentioned in your interview, you know, you have the two SEALs on the record explaining about the firefights. I saw with my own eyes the, the damage uh, that this very violent raid inflicted on the compound before it was demolished. He's saying there, there were no other shots fired other than the shots that, that killed bin Laden. That's right. And, you know, that's just, I mean... <laughs> you saw just, bullet holes. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there was a, a quite an intense exchange of fire with one of the bodyguards. There were, you know, I don't know, dozens of bullet holes in, a, in, in one of the houses in the compound before they even got to bin Laden. So, you know, that sort of factual element just is we can set aside. There was a firefight. This wasn't some sort of setup between the U.S. and the Pakistanis, as he, as, which is one of the principal claims of the peace. There is an NBC report tonight, which certainly doesn't corroborate everything or even a majority of what Hirsch alleges, but NBC does say that a Pakistani tipster did, in fact, walk up to the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad to tip off American officials about bin Laden's whereabouts. Well, I, that's a very interesting report, and I think we need to dig into it. You know, Mike Morrell, uh, the deputy director of the CIA, has got a new book out, and he's going to be on CNN, and I think he was the operational uh, sort of, he was the operational guy in charge of this operation. And I think it's a good opportunity to ask him about this. I mean, the fact that there was a walk-in, um, you know, or the possibility, you know, that's an interesting new dimension of the story. And I think it needs to be dug into who that, what that, who that walk-in was, what he said, uh, how it fits into the larger picture. Uh, it's not clear yet. What Hirsch is also alleging this article, based on his, his sourcing, um, is that essentially the Saudis were supporting bin Laden for years while he was in hiding, which, I mean... 
bin Laden was a sworn enemy of the Saudis, of the House of Assad. He wanted to right. destroy if, them. Right. If there's one person the Saudis would actually want to kill, in fact, according to al-Qaeda itself, there were multiple assassination attempts uh, against bin Laden when he was living in Afghanistan uh, before 9-11 by the Saudis. The idea that they were financing him while he was in Abdabad, it just doesn't pass any common sense test. And Pakistan and Saudi are very close allies. Uh, so what I mean, the, you know, if if they knew that he, he was there, they would just say to the Pakistanis, "Hey, we're just going to our guys are going to go in and get rid of him." So that that part of the story makes no sense at all, Anderson. 